Today we're going to change the front brakes on a 2004 Ford Focus ZTW. But before we start that, there's some safety precautions that we need to keep in mind. Please don't use the jacks that come with the car, those little cranky things, because if that falls over, the car could land on you. So we want some solid support. These are jacks. These are fairly inexpensive to pick up at most automotive stores. Chalk the wheels here so that the car doesn't roll back and there's no movement of it once it's jacked up. Another precaution is, of course, you put the car in park and you set the parking brakes. This is the brake fluid reservoir. I unloosened the cap and put a towel around it so that when you squeeze the, the calipers, uh, the excess fluid is able to pour out of the system and there's something to catch it. Again, you want to have towels because this stuff is very corrosive and you don't want it affecting any of the metalwork around the, uh, the reservoir. Brake pads, these are Duralas uh, ceramics. You know, you buy whatever you think is best for your vehicle. I'm just trying these out because you get a lot of dust with the Focus and let me see if these ceramics help out with that. I'm also replacing the rotor because uh, the rotor on this car is warped. Uh, usually you replace them at every other brake job. Okay, since the wheels are going to have to come off, first thing I do is uh, get my lug wrench. And while the car is still on the ground, I just loosen each of the bolts in a star pattern and just break them loose so that you won't have to apply so much torque when you get the wheel up in the air. So now we're going to jack up the car. I've loosened the lugs on both sets of wheels and just using a hydraulic jack I'll make sure the wheels uh, clear the pavement. Now the car is up in the air. We're going to use our jack stand to make sure the vehicle does not come down on top of us. We pull off our tire. This is our rotor. This one's kind of shot as I explained earlier. Here's the calipers and here's the actual brake pad. So we're going to do one disc at a time because that way if we forget how something is put together we can jump to the other side because obviously we don't do brake changes every day. One of the first things we need to do for this brake job is to take the dust caps off so we can get to the, uh, the nut and bolt so we can release the caliper. And these usually just come out fairly easy. You may need a screwdriver to pry them loose. But now we can use our wrench to get in there and loosen the bolt. Uh, I wish I had a, a metric number for you on this, but I don't because it's not on the socket. This is the caliper spring that holds the uh, assembly in place. You need to get this over that so it's loose. And now, once we loosen the bolts, this whole section should just peel away. Now a word of caution here, when the two bolts are out and the caliper is uh, loose, the only thing holding it in place is the brake line. And you don't want the full weight of the caliper on that brake line because you're either going to snap it or you're going to distort it somehow. So I have a piece of bungee cord, old bungee cord, it's going to pull this up and out of the way for me and so it doesn't put a strain on this brake line here. Bottom bolt is out. Top bolt is out. And we've now released the caliper from the rotary and the wheel. So now I'm use a piece of bungee cord and find a place where it'll just hold on to this so it's not hanging off the brake key. We're going to take off the out pad, the outside pad first. We've removed the outside pad. The inside pad is still here. It's fairly worn down. I'm going to use the disc pad spreader to push on this pad so that the piston in the caliper is all the way back at its home position so that when I put in the new pads, there'll be space for them. Okay, so now I'm removing the spreader. The piston is all the way back at its home position. And then we just pull out the inner pad which is secured by springs. Okay, this is the old rotor. 
it should come right out. Rotor's installed. All right, before we put on the pads, uh, Duralast has been nice enough to give us some brake lubricant. And I like to put that on any components that are touching each other, metal to metal, because that's where you're going to pick up that vibration from the braking. Take our brake pad, our inner brake pad, that's the one with the spring, and put it inside and snap it into place. Before I put the outer brake pad on, I'm going to lubricate, again with this brake lubricant, uh, the caliper rail. This is where the caliper is going to rest on. Again, we're hoping to minimize squeaks and vibrations. And this should really do it for us. You're not applying a whole lot. Just a small layer of it. Top and bottom rail, of course. Pick up the caliper. Ugh. It's starting to get heavy because there's some pads on it. And we slide in the outer pad. And it should align with the springs. And then we're going to put that sucker on the rails once I get it mounted on here. Okay, it's very important that these guide springs right up all the way up on the inside. The spring then goes over the notch and then goes underneath the rest of it. And this will actually snap underneath like that so that the pads are held into place. So again, it's the part that connects to the pad goes over the top, goes around, and comes underneath these two points to hold the pad in place. And now we're going to get ready to slide it onto the caliper. Okay, so now we're just going to slide the caliper over the rotor, get our bolts, slide them in, and find that opening, and then we can drive those home with the, uh, the ratchet. Okay, so we're just going to drive home the two bolts to secure the calipers to the rail and then this great job will be done and then we'll do the other side. That, uh, double checking calipers are on the rails top and bottom. Caliper spring is going over the top nubs and then it goes underneath the caliper and locks into position thereby securing the pads.